Hello everybody. I'm going to give a tour of my converted cargo trailer. I use this as a toy hauler to haul a side-by-side -side and go to camping uh, on our off-roading trips. To start, I'll give a little bit of an explanation of why did I choose to convert my own cargo trailer versus to just buy a toy hauler. Uh, and there are many reasons for that, so I'll go into a couple of those. The first reason is because I pull this with a, um, you know, a half-ton Yukon. Uh, Yukon Denali, which does have a high payload or a high towing capability uh, with the bigger, the 6.2 liter um, and air ride suspension, etc. But um, I, when I started to look into what toy hauler campers were available, um, they were all in the 25 to 30 foot range and I just didn't want to pull something that long. This trailer is 18, it's an 18 foot um, cargo uh, spread axle cargo Spartan trailer from Georgia um, and it has the V nose so I get an extra two feet from that so it's 20 foot from tip to tail um, but the box itself the main box is only 18 feet long so that was probably the biggest reason I chose to go with a, a converted cargo trailer the second reason is just because it's built so much heavier duty, the frame, the axles, etc. This is a spread axle trailer, so it pulls down the road very, very well, um, even loaded with the side-by-side -side in it. So uh, I'll give you a quick walk around of the outside of the trailer. I know that when we go camping and go on our off-roading trips, um, a lot of times people want to look at it, get ideas, etc. And I will say that most of the ideas that I um, used to build the trailer um i got from the different converted cargo trailer conversion or converted trailer uh either facebook page uh, or different van life pages so i could get the ideas so um maybe you can pick up a thing or two in this conversion that you like on your own um as you're building it and it can help you along the way so to start off with i did mention that this was a spread axle trailer um I would highly recommend that if you have the option. In my opinion, they pull so much nicer. Um, these are the 5,200 pound axles as well. Um, they're torsion axles, so they're not straight axles and it pulls very, very well. So it is, um, the trailer that we got was, it's, it's the blacked out model. Um, it did not come with the awning. I added that, I bought it on Amazon. The downside to that was, is that the awnings that I could find, none of them came in black. So I did have to spray paint all of the metal black. Um, and then I have to touch it up from time to time because it does scrape off really easy because I didn't sand it down. I probably should have sanded it down and then spray painted it and it would have stuck better, but I was in a hurry. And then on the top, the Furion air conditioner. Uh, what I would say is those are... You do get a good deal on those. Those are, are one of the cheaper ones to buy. I don't know if I would recommend one. I think if I had this to do over again, I would do the mini split. As we're walking around the outside, uh, a couple of things that I'll point out. Number one, you're gonna wanna put uh, vents in. So I have two vents. I have one vent on each side. You can see it down here at the bottom. And then um, I have one on the other side. The uh, I did put lights out here that the, you can see the, uh, the lower lights are um, on a separate switch than the little LED rope light at the top. Um, what I'll say about those is that the lower lights are super, super bright. So if you're out here working on something at night, they're very helpful. Um, but those are really the only time you're gonna wanna use them because they blind you otherwise. The rope light, the, the 12 volt little rope light up at the top, those are really, really nice and I would highly recommend those. This little shelf right here, um, it's pretty simple, but the shelf actually um, goes on and off. And I got this idea from the teardrop trailer community and this, it just latches on, it's pretty simple. Um, and then, you know, it allows you to set your drinks, set your beer out here, whatever, as you're out here cooking and uh, works really nice. The, um, the outside uh, TV, what I'll say about this is, yes, we use it a lot. Um, it does not fall off in the wind or anything like that, and it goes on very simple. 
So it just simply, I just left the old um, bracket from uh, the wall mount. Uh, I didn't need all of it, I just used a piece of it. And then these little gadgets right here are actually from a side-by-side, -side. there's two of them. And that's those are what are used for mounting the skid plate underneath. And I had a bunch of extra ones. So you can see, it just simply hangs over the top of one of those latches and it doesn't fall off. Uh, this down here is my beverage opener. And then that is a magnet. So as you open the beer bottles, the uh, the top sticks to that. And then underneath, I actually have a plug down there um, that comes down underneath of the floor. And that's what the TV plugs into. And then my little 12 volt outdoor cooler plugs in and that's where it stays as well. I did not do a, um, a pull out step. I may because as I'm doing this, one of the things that you want to do is you're going to want to try to figure out, you're going to want to try to figure out, um, what makes your setup and tear down easier and lugging around different parts and pieces such as that step, um, that, you know, it kind of gets old. I have done things to minimize what, what it takes to set up and I'll explain some of those things as I go. As far as the windows go, I only have two windows. They're both on this side. I will say that it, like everyone else, it was a little bit nerve wracking to put the windows in. Um, this bigger window here, I did actually have to cut one of the studs out and then uh, weld extra supports and then rebuild the wall from the inside. The one on the door, uh, this one on the door here, um, what I'll say about that is, is that there's really no easy way to do it. You just have to use the template that comes with it. Um, take your time, cut very, very carefully because you only have one, one chance to do that correctly. And I, it's the same with this other one here too. But um, for some reason, that one was not as nerve wracking to me as the one in the door. A couple of the things that I've done to help make setup and tear down so much easier is I've added these, um, these toolboxes on the front. Those allow me to keep my outdoor cooking, cooking utensils or cooking supplies, etc., my tools, uh, different things in those toolboxes. So everything has its own place. In the far toolbox is anything used for plumbing, electric, um, anything to hook the trailer up mainly. And then this side is uh, any type of tools or outdoor cooking supplies. And the way that I built this, I actually built a frame, um, built a frame and welded it to the trailer. And you can see underneath of here. So the boxes are not screwed to the sidewall. The boxes are actually screwed to the frame that's welded underneath of them. So you can see there's the frame sticking out on the front. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that I did was I added this electronic tongue jack, which I wouldn't have another one of these trailers without one. So definitely that is a must. One of the things that I will say on that is I've seen people run them off of the small little trailer brake battery. That's, I don't think that that's the right way to do it. Um, this is ran inside to the actual battery inside of the trailer. This little setup right here is what I did was I took some of the spare or the scrap metal that I cut off of the trailer while making the windows and I put those on the bottom of the frame. And then what that allowed me to do is to use that as a storage bin for my sewer hose. So once again, I recommend doing that. I struggled for quite a while trying to figure out always where to stick that hose and, and it was just always a mess and so on and so forth. And that is a simple, simple little solution. And then I just put bungee cords over the top of it. I just screwed some uh, screws into the top of there and I just put bungee cords across the top and it works well. It's been that way for the last several trips. The hitch that I use is um, a 1200 pound 
weight distribution hitch and I believe I don't know the name of a rec curve or recurve yeah recurve and um, I love this hitch I bought it used from somebody um, I towed this for the first few times without that hitch and uh, I'll never do it again because it just tows so much better um, so much better with it as I mentioned uh, this is a Vino's trailer it's a Spartan um, I think they're probably all the same but um, but anyways this is a Spartan Vino's trailer uh, it's a charcoal gray with the blackout package on it. So, in my opinion, it looks really, really nice. Okay. So, this is the, the uh, driver's side of the trailer, which is where your, your utility hookups and stuff are. So, as I mentioned, uh, this side of the trailer does not have any windows in it. I originally thought that I was going to want them. But um, now that I've been using it without, I don't have a need to have any, any, any windows on this side. So, what I did... Uh, I wanted this thing to be like a real camper, um, so I didn't cut, didn't cut many corners. So this, uh, the top, uh, the box there that's locked, that is my fill, uh, my fill location for my, uh, freshwater tank. And then it also has another hookup. I'm going to end up putting an outdoor shower on this side. So I can just hook my hose up to my shower and put that out here. Down below, I have the 50 amp um, hookup, 30 amp or 50 amp hookup to go inside. And then the water inlet next to that is where I hook my city water up. Down below that is where I have, and they're fairly low, but I've never had any, any problems with um, potentially dragging them on the ground. But I do have a black tank. It's a 13 gallon black tank and a 13 gallon gray tank. Um, so I do have the normal, uh, sewer discharge, just like on a, on a camper. And, uh, those tanks are both mounted up underneath below or, uh, between the floor joists. And then lastly on this side is the other vent. So you can see the other vent there down in the back. So here's just another shot from, from, uh, from this side. So you can see it with the awning out from the front. So as as we go inside, the first thing I'll, I'll show you is um, the screen door. So the screen door is just one of those cheap little uh, magnets in the center screen door. And right now it's, it's tied back um, because it's parked at home. But if we were camping somewhere um, that we could leave the doors and windows open, that would be uh, like normal. And then that's just a little magnetic screen door type deal. Our window uh pull has the blackout the blackout shades on it i think that probably all these windows come uh standard with that for the door the door windows this the door windows at least this one does not open up so once you go inside you're going to see uh the way that mine is set up is right across from the door or yeah right across from the door is where i have my kitchen the living area is to the back of the trailer and then the bathroom is to the front of the trailer. So I used um, uh, the thin um, knotty pine from, I believe, Home Depot, the real thin stuff, and uh, just framed this up like normal. To the right as you walk in, as I mentioned, is the bathroom, and then to the left is the living area. And then this is my kitchen in the middle. So right there, first thing is my different controls. So. Um, your uh your, your tank monitor and your water pump uh thermostat is to the right uh smoke detector fire alarm is up there and then the carbon monoxide detector is there and then all of my switches for my lights are here my electric is um my electric box is is right there easy to access and then that down there is my little uh infrared heater probably not the best heater in the world it does work great um, it's just when you're camping sometimes and it's only 30 degrees outside, it does all it can to keep up, uh, so that you can get comfortable, comfortable enough to sleep in here. Okay. So once you come in the camper, the kitchen area, as I mentioned, is, is there. So the way that I built mine, it's pretty simple. Those cabinets up above are just upper cabinets from any, 
any uh, home improvement store. Um, those are uh, fairly shallow, so they're upper cabinets, and I just put two of those on the wall. And my countertop is just some leftover um, cypress that we were using it when we built our house. And uh, I rounded all that stuff off so, you know, as you could get around that tight little squeeze there, you wouldn't bump into the corners. And over here to the left is my sink and then more little, more little shelving up there. Um, the sink is literally just an old salad bowl. And I just put a, a drain in the bottom of it, siliconed it. It works just fine. Um, okay, so looking towards the back of the trailer, as I mentioned, this is in the travel mode. So I needed a 13-foot garage. Um, and I have almost exactly 13 feet. So as you come into here, I have uh, tables on the left window on the left uh the beds are just from ikea and then i built a fold down mechanism that allows them to fold down and then the upper bunk is built with literally just two by fours some angle iron um and pieces from harbor freight and then that allows that to store high enough so that the side by side can fit underneath of it and when it is in here it is all packed together um, but everything fits perfectly Spare parts down on the left, spare parts down on the right. Uh, my spare tire, I chose to mount the spare tire to the trailer on the inside so that it doesn't get dry rotted or anything like that on the outside. And then that's my outdoor grill um, that stays strapped to the back door. So everything, uh, when you're building something like this, everything has to have its own spot. Outdoor chairs go on top of the bed there and get strapped down. This here is... Um, so I did also put some antiques in here as I was building it. So that up at the top, that is actually an old um, track system from our family farm um, from one of the doors that slid open. So I used that in here. I thought it was pretty cool to use it as a coat hanger. And then uh, um, I also should mention that the, uh, well, the TV swings out. Um, currently it's strapped to the wall, but it's, it's on a hinge that swings out and faces to the back of the trailer to the beds. My, uh, underneath of here, so my f fresh, uh, water tank is underneath of there. Uh, water pump, battery, propane tank, etc. is all underneath of there. And I was going to close all of that in with hard-sided, um, you know, doors, but I threw that on there. I threw ex that material on there as a temporary, um, temporary for the first trip that we took this on. And I've just never had a need to change it. So that's where it stays. So this is, uh, this is what it's like in, in travel mode. Now I'll go up into the bathroom. That little door is uh your, the bathroom you will also see in somewhat of a travel mode because there's a key thing in the bathroom that has to stay up there during uh while we're while we're traveling so the door is in the corner of the in the corner there it pulls across at an angle and it sticks to this wall so when you're in the bathroom the bathroom actually feels like a like a good size bathroom so if you go around the corner so shower is in the far right, the far right sign with the uh, max air, or the far right side with the max air fan above it. The hot water heater is an instant hot water heater. Um, and because we don't have any, you know, all that mounted on the outside, it is mounted right next to the max air fan. So anytime you're taking a shower, you do have to be running the fan. And we do have our carbon monoxide detector in here as well. For the shower pan, quite simple. Um, the way that I built the shower pan was literally like you would build a shower pan in a house if you were building a custom shower. So on the sides for the, the edge, those are two two by fours stacked on top of each other. Um, in the middle to slope the floor, that is um, the lightweight concrete mixture that would you would use inside of a house as a normal shower pan, as I mentioned. And then, so how did I seal it? So what it is, it is the 
Um, it's one can, one pint of the black and one pint of the white. Um, the rubber sealer that you see the commercials on that they build a screen door uh, or a boat out of a screen door. And it's a rubber, it just makes a rubber liner and it works well. It does get really slick when it's wet, which is why I have the, um, the, uh, that down and down on the, on the floor there. And I know it's dirty because we've been using it all season and I just haven't had time to clean it up. But yes, there is a drain. Um, and then that drains into, into the gray water tank for, for the toilet. Uh, it's a normal RV style toilet. And then, as I mentioned, this is what we call travel mode because that is our refrigerator, our 12 volt refrigerator, that it stays up here so that we can pack our groceries and stuff in. There's a plug down here to the left uh, to power that while we're traveling. And what I'll do is I'm going to swing around and show you the pantry because I think that that's a fairly clever idea on how we built that. So uh, batteries, the batteries are mounted down below there. Uh, all of this comes out very, very easy. So this is a 12 inch by 12 inch um, soft sided storage compartment type deal that you would normally hang in a closet. And what I did was that is hanging at the top um, on its normal clips, you know, like you would in a closet in your house. And then on the sides, what I did was I just stapled it to, I just stapled it to the sides. And then, and you can actually see the staples if you look close. Um, but what this allows me to do is if I ever need back behind there, um, you can easily take this out and it exposes the entire backside of, uh, your electric panel, the entire, the backside of, uh, you can get into your batteries. It's very, very simple. Um, and the things don't fall out of here, um, because of the way that these are shaped. So they, they lean back and... I just pile my stuff in here. Um, you know, keep your toiletries and stuff down on the bottom and everything just kind of stays in its, in its own place. So, so this is the bathroom. Um, what I will say is the fan there, there's a hole cut in the wall. Um, and so I use that fan to blow the cold air in here um, while, you, while you're running the air conditioner during the summer. And then for the shower curtain, uh, what I'll say is this is an area that I still haven't found the right answer to. That shower curtain is just a piece, or the 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 bar is just a piece of paracord. And once again, these are off of side-by-side -side, uh, skid plates. And I use those, stuck them to the, to the metal studs, and then it holds up good enough. I, I'm still looking to try to find a different solution for that. So if you have one, let me know. And then this is where, you know, towels, jackets, whatever, if you want to hang stuff up here in the bathroom. And I will, I'll pull this across so that you can see um, what the bathroom looks like with the door closed. From. Okay, so now this is back in the living area. So if somebody is in the bathroom, you can see the bathroom door stays closed. There's a gap at the top to let the air move around. And then um, it just works really nice. As I, as I start to set up the beds to show you guys what it looks like with the beds all down and the headboard uh, across the back, I wanted to show you this real quick because um, I get asked quite a bit on how the, the legs work on the beds. And it's pretty simple. Um, probably not the most sturdy thing in the world, but they haven't broke yet. Um, so I just have hinges underneath of here, a little bungee cord. So the bungee cord goes there like that, which holds the leg out. Same thing back here on the back, put that like that and put that like that. Okay, so this is what the camper looks like. Um, other than the rug, there's a rug that goes down on the floor and I didn't put that down. Um, the rug goes down on the floor so that you're not walking on, uh, 
what feels like a, a garage floor, I guess. So, table folds up over here in the kitchen area. Refrigerator goes down below it. Over here on the window side, we have a shelf at the top that comes out um, there. And then another shelf down at the bottom here. Both beds come out. Um, very comfortable. Each bed has its own little shelf that folds down off of the wall to put your cell phone on um, or whatever. The, the lights that are back there have a uh, plug-in to charge your cell phone on both sides. Same over here. Um, the headboard. So the first time that we went, because we, the beds are not completely against the back wall there, so pillows kept slipping off the beds. So I came up with this, this idea here. And this is just um, some material basically made into like a sleeve type deal. Bungee cord on the bottom and bungee cord on the top. And when we put the two beds together, we hook the two bungee cords together so your pillows won't, uh, won't slide off the back of the wall. Believe it or not, I think the most comfortable bed in the whole place is the cot. That we have up at the top um up at the top also there is a a light up there from harbor freight cheap little light and then same deal here i'll turn the light off but the same deal there we have a plug there to plug in your cell phone um etc and then it, you know if you're staying in the, in the bunk you have your own light so that you can turn the lights on and off as you need to get up in the middle of the night or whatever so the way that the bed is built um or the bunk i'm sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna do some changing around on it because it it's it's a little bit too hard to get in and out of its position it's not super hard but but it is um a little bit annoying so that is simply built with two by fours um for the runners that go across and then what holds the middle of the uh, the bed together is moving blankets from Harbor Freight, and I put those um, I put those around two of them, nailed it so that it basically acts like a uh, a cot, and then I put an old cot uh, mattress over the top of that, and then I wrapped it in a sheet from the bedding that I bought for the beds and then stapled that sheet um, to the sides. So is it perfectly beautiful? No, but does it serve its purpose of allowing us to go off-road and camping on the weekends and have fun while we're doing it? Yes, absolutely. And it's very, very comfortable while we're, while we're there. So anyways, this is back at the beds looking forward with all of the tables uh, up in their position. All right, guys, so hopefully you uh, enjoyed this little walkthrough of our converted cargo trailer, and maybe you picked up on a couple of things that you want to use in yours. So I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, if you got any advice for redoing the cot bed or anything else that I mentioned uh, that I'm still looking for solutions on, just let me know down in the comments. Thanks.